On his way home to Rome earlier this week, Pope Francis addressed a group of reporters while aboard his plane, and he made a comment to the effect that, who am I to judge gay priests? And this has created all kinds of stir amongst the media and amongst the Catholic faithful as well. It's left many people confused. Some people are wondering if the Pope is changing the Church's teaching on homosexuality, or if at least he's beginning to lay the foundation for that. Other people are saying, no, but he is changing the tone of voice with which the Church is speaking about homosexuality and engaging um, homosexuals. And other people are saying, I, I don't understand this at all. How can a priest have a sexual orientation? I want to address these three comments in this YouTube video. I want to start with that last comment. I was tagged in a Facebook post where somebody asked, how is it that priests have a sexual orientation? Aren't they supposed to be celibate and united wholeheartedly to God? I, I don't understand how the Pope could speak of there being such a thing as a gay priest or something like that. I want to address that issue because I think it's a misunderstanding of sexual orientation versus sexual activity. As a celibate, uh, priests are called to celibacy to refrain from sexual activity, but they aren't called to have no sexual orientation. We're human beings and we do have sexual orientations. And so even a priest who is committed to, to celibacy has a sexual orientation. He may be attracted to men, to women, to both, you know, it could be anything. But he's still called to celibacy, meaning he doesn't act out on those sexual feelings or sexual desires. Rather, the way he acts out his sexuality or lives out his sexuality is through the commitment to celibacy, to refrain from sexual activity and romantic relationships. Now, to be clear, this does not mean that a priest does not love. In fact, celibacy is supposed to be a way of loving for a priest. Now, some priests admittedly use it as a way to put everybody at a distance from them, and that's their way of dealing with celibacy, but that's unhealthy. Celibacy is meant to draw us into relationship with people, not in a sexual way, certainly, but into a way that can be very much loving and open and sharing and that, all those things. You know, I, I certainly, I have a family. I don't have children, but I have, you know, mom and dad and brothers and sisters and siblings and, um, cousins and aunts and uncles, you know, all that type of thing. And I have loving relationships with all of them. I also have friends, and I'm, I have loving relationships with my friends, too. And it's important for me, as, as a priest, to, to be able to, to love. That's what celibacy calls me to, just as marriage calls a couple to, to love, albeit in a different way. So it's important to understand that celibacy doesn't prevent a priest from loving, and it doesn't mean that priests don't have a sexual orientation or that they somehow become asexual beings. We're very much sexual beings. It's just that our sexuality is lived out through celibacy, through the commitment to refrain from sexual activity. Now, that being said, let's go to this issue about, is the Pope changing the Church's teaching on homosexual activity? No, not at all. The, the Pope can't. Uh, the church teaching is a, a truth of the faith, and truth by definition doesn't change, so something can't be true today and not true tomorrow. Truth uh, endures for all times, especially when it comes to immoral truths. So truth doesn't change. The Pope isn't changing the church, church's teaching. Now, some people said, but he is changing the tone of voice in which he's engaging the, the world and the, the, homo, the issue of homosexuality and homosexuals as a whole. And I think that's probably true, and I think that's welcome, because it's, he's, what he's doing is he's exemplifying, he's living out the church teaching. You see, the Catholic Church teaches that we are to embrace people of any orientation, homosexual or heterosexual, but it specifically says that we can't discriminate against homosexuals. It says that right in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And yet, so often, people become so afraid because we know that the church shuns homosexual activity as sinful, that we shun all homosexuals altogether. And that's not what we're called to do as members of the Catholic Church. We are called very much to embrace people who are homosexual, not to embrace a homosexual lifestyle, but to embrace them because they are made in the image and likeness of God. You see, the church does not reduce people to their sexuality or their sexual orientation. We don't say, because you're a homosexual, we don't want you, we don't want any part of you, or because you're a heterosexual, welcome, you're, you're free to join us. That's not it at all. The church, as a matter of fact, says we shouldn't reduce people to their sexual orientation. It's our modern culture that tends to do that. If you think about this. I always think back to, you know, a bunch of these reality shows, especially um, things like The Real World or something like that, where you're always wondering the first few episodes, oh, who's going to come out as being the gay person and that kind of thing. And people get reduced to this orientation in these shows. But the church says that's not a healthy thing. 
People are human beings made in the image and likeness of God. And because of that, every human being needs to be afforded a dignity of somebody who's made in the image and likeness of God. And that's always been her teaching. Now, some people point and they say, yeah, but the previous pope, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, he made the comment that um, homosexual activity was an objective moral evil. Again, it's important to note, he didn't say all homosexuals were objectively evil or something like that, or even call them evil. He said the activity itself was evil, meaning that it's sinful, it's always wrong. But he didn't say that, therefore, all homosexuals are going to hell and we condemn them to hell or anything like that. It's not at all what he said. What I think he intended to say, he didn't perhaps exude it as well as Francis, is that we do treat all homosexuals with the dignity of being made in the image and likeness of God. Now, sometimes, certainly, individual Catholics and individual priests and bishops and popes even have failed, probably, in doing that and failed to reach out and embrace people or make them feel um, affirmed in their dignity as a human being. Um, so while we can disagree with their lifestyle, we can disagree with what they're doing, we still say they are a human being and they are made in the image and likeness of God. And they are called to celibacy, and to the extent that they're living a celibate life, they're certainly welcome to the fullness of the faith, to participate fully. They can receive communion in our church, even if they are living a lifestyle in accord with what the church teaches. So it's important to understand that we do embrace all people. And I think it's wonderful that, that Pope Francis made that comment, because it's allowed the church to clarify her teaching, to say, you know, we're not changing our position on homosexual activity, but we're also not changing our position on homosexuals themselves, or people of any orientation, and that we're not willing to reduce people to their orientation, and therefore we're not going to judge them. See, an interesting thing, too, about the church is that we never condemn anybody to hell. We claim certain people are in heaven. Those people, we call them the saints. But we never say anybody is definitively in hell, other than the devil. But other than that, we don't say we know somebody to, to be in hell. We say that that's left for God to judge, because it's only God who and the sinner themselves who can know the state of somebody's soul. Uh, we can't. We can, you know, try to guess it, and sometimes we do at times. And certainly in confession, somebody could reveal the state of their soul to us, and we and could ask for healing and forgiveness, and we can give that um, out to them, fortunately, uh, thanks be to God. But we don't know definitively at the moment of death the state of anybody's soul. That's the person knows, and God knows. And so we don't judge people. We don't say, you know, this person's going to hell. That's the type of judging. Now, Francis, again, to be very clear, is not condoning homosexual activity or saying that priests who are homosexuals can therefore act out on their sexuality. They're still called to celibacy. They're still called to that committed uh, celibacy where that's the way they're going to live their lives. But he is saying that I'm not going to be one who's going to say that because somebody is a homosexual, they're going to hell. And I think that's important for us to understand. And I think that's the takeaway. And it's important for us as Catholics to remember, this is not a change in our faith. This is what we've always believed. It's just we have somebody who's exemplifying it so powerfully. And I think it's important that we have that and that we follow his example.